In this lecture, we will explore Cloud CDN. Cloud CDN is a content delivery network that works with the HTTPS load balancer. The load balancer provides the front-end IP addresses, ports that receive requests and the back-end to respond to these requests. Cloud CDN content can be served from various types of backends, like instance groups, network endpoint groups, and buckets in cloud storage. These backends are also called origin servers. The diagram here shows how responses from these origin servers running on VM instances flow through an HTTPS load balancer before being delivered by the cloud CDN. In a traditional CDN setup, a regional data center with a public IP is exposed to the internet which is looked up by DNS or IP by a CDN configuration. This has a lot of hops and fairly complex because the CDN is a separate system that needs to be updated. Also notice where the load balancers are. With Google, the load balancers sit right on the edge. The global Anycast IP address can check for the best route across global control plane to the origin server. Cloud CDN works in parallel here with the load balancers on the edge even with SSL. The first time a piece of content is requested, the GFE determines that it can't fulfill the request from the cache. This is called a cache miss. Then it checks nearby caches to see if the data is available for a cache-to-cache -cache fill. Otherwise, GFE forwards the request to the HTTPS load balancer. The load balancer in turn forwards the request to one of the backends, and the backend is the origin server for the content. When the cache receives this content, the GFE forwards the content to the user. If the content is cacheable, the cache will store it for future requests. The reasons it may not save it are if the cache is full with popular data or if the new data is too large and it's, a, it's just the first request. The data transferred from cache to a client is called cache egress. The data transferred to a cache is called cache fill. On a cache hit, you pay for cache egress bandwidth. Cache fill can originate from another cloud CDN cache or from the origin server. You have to pay for the bandwidth during a cache fill. The cache hit ratio is a percentage of times that a requested object is served from the cache. Caching only happens with user interaction. That is, when users request data, there is no replication or automation. You can't preload a cache with specific data. After you enable Cloud CDN, caching happens automatically for all cacheable content across your machines. The origin server uses HTTP A headers to indicate which responses should be cached and which should not. Cloud CDN uses caches in numerous locations around the world. Because of the nature of the caches, it's impossible to predict whether a particular request will be served out of the cache or not. When you use a backend bucket, the origin server is cloud storage. When you use VM instances, the origin server is the web server software you run on those instances. Every cache has a limit on how much it can hold. However, Cloud CDN adds content to caches even after they're full. So to insert this content, it needs to remove something first. This is called eviction. Typically caches are full in a healthy system and data is constantly being evicted. The unpopular content here means content that hasn't been accessed in a while. 
There's another parameter called the expiration, which tells the cache when the data expires and not serve it to users. Eviction and expiration are separate. The evicted content might be expired or not. Setting an expiration time doesn't affect eviction. The size of the cache depends if the origin server supports byte range requests. A byte range requests are the ability to make multiple calls to the server to request partial data. Cloud storage supports this and for instances, it depends on your configuration. There is a max size of 5 terabytes if the origin supports byte range requests and otherwise it's 10 megabytes. Once an object is cached, it normally remains in the cache until it expires or it's evicted to make room for new content. You control the expiration time through standard HTTP headers. You can also force an object or set of objects to be ignored by the cache by requesting a cache invalidation. You can restrict invalidation to only one host or all. Invalidation should not be part of a regular workflow and it's rate limited. Cloud CDN is a distributed system, so it may take some time for the changes to propagate. Cloud CDN signed URLs enable you to serve responses from Google Cloud Platform's globally distributed caches even when you need requests to be authorized. Signed URLs give a client temporary access to a private resource without requiring additional authorization. Selected elements of a request are hashed and cryptographically signed using a strongly random key that you generate. However, do note that anyone can access this once you have the authorization. You can set an expiration time for security purposes. In this demo, we'll learn how to enable Cloud CDN with the HTTPS load balancer. In this demo, we'll learn how to enable Cloud CDN for a backend service. In this demo, we'll learn how to enable Cloud CDN. The instructions for the demo can be found in the document Cloud CDN Demo and they should be available in your project resources or lecture resources. So we're back here in our Google Cloud Platform dashboard and if it's your first time make sure you have your billing set up and you're in the correct project. So I'm selecting this here, you can create a new project, in my case I'm selecting Networking Demo. So here we can go to our navigation menu, scroll down to networking, networking services and cloud CDN. We can add our origin here, click add origin and select origin and we have our load balancer that we created in a previous lecture. So we can click on this and then it shows the backend services from that load balancer which is which are the two instances video service and the web map service click add and that's been added so now we can also do this from the load balancer so if we click on load balancing and this is our uh, HTTP load balancer and if we click on this then we can see that the cloud CDN is enabled. So we could, if we edit this, and as part of the configuration of the backend configuration, and also, for example, if you're creating a new load balancer, when you're setting up the backend services, there is an option here that says enable cloud CDN. So you can simply just check this box while creating the load balancer and for that specific instance group or network endpoint, then the CDN will be enabled. In this demo, we'll learn how to view logs from Stackdriver. Demo three, viewing logs. So we can see how Cloud CDN 
is caching or not caching our data in the logs. So for that, let's go to our stack driver, navigation menu, stack driver, logging and logs viewer. So here we can select what we want to, which logs we want to look at. So here we are going to look at the HTTP load balancer and the HTTP content rule for this specific forwarding rule and then and then for this specific URL map and this is the web map which is the our HTTP load balancer so the cloud CDN logs are integrated into the logs for the load balancer and so if you look at for example this entry here so we can see that this HTTP request part and this is basically the where the caching information is logged so here we can see that it's a cache lookup equals true so if we look at our reference here so these are the three types of cache logging there's a cache hit cache hit validated with the origin server or it's a cache miss so here we can see that when we see a cache lookup equals true that means it's this one so that's a cache miss now that's not necessarily a bad thing not uh, not all types of data and requests are cached as we saw in the lecture so this entry shows that this specific request was not found in the cache for more details check the link in the description learn with wits labs success certified